And so to the ladies out there, if you want men to do better and be better, we do better and we become better, especially when it comes to the women in our lives through being championed about the good that we're already doing. Even if it's a smidget, right? Like to your point, bro, I, I still celebrate. I still celebrate Cam. I celebrate the Nick Cannons of the world because I've never heard from them a shunning of the responsibility and the desire. You know what I'm saying? I've never heard that from them. A shunning of the responsibility and desire to cover, to love and take care of their kids. Never heard it from them. my daughter. She's she's 50-50 between her mom and I. So like, I while, while most times I get to see her every day because of, you know, going to school and we ride to school together. I take her to school, pick her up. She's at my house, things like that. Um, but those days that I don't, that she's not under my roof, you know what I'm saying? There, there, there's a, there's a gap there. There's a gap there. You know what I'm saying? And so I think initially as men, we've got to own that um, and find ways to be creatively healthy in our engagement of our kids and especially those kids that aren't under our roof um, every single day. I hope that you're the one And that you are the prototype we'll Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. What does healthy manhood look like today? I mean, I know times have changed, but we're going to discuss that. Healthy manhood, healthy masculinity. What does the, the role of a man look like today? We're going to discuss that and so much more in this segment of It's Scary to Remarry. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier free engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, inspiring you to love fearlessly. We have a returning guest. He's no stranger to the podcast, Brave Hearts community. He's a man of God. He's the team culture developer, leadership generator, wordsmith, and keynote speaker. I know him personally. This man is everything that he says. Brave Hearts community, let's show some returning love to Dwayne Hawkins. How are you doing this evening, sir? Bro, bro, it's good, man. It's good. Real talk. Life is great, man. It's good to be with you again. Yeah, man. Once again, I, I know the, the Brave Hearts community, they got so much love for you. I know they... They like this brother. We we might have to co-host and do some stuff together. We talked about that back in the day, but I mean, listen, and the way things are going for me now, bro, like the time, the time, the time box is opened up, man. So, you know, I know that's not what we're talking about tonight, but it's definitely been some some major changes in my life, man. Like great, 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 great changes. Um, you know, we just we dive in more in it. So it is it's befitting, bro, that that uh we're gonna get to talk about manhood and masculinity tonight. So Ooh, yeah, man, for sure. So I want to jump right into this. What, in in your opinion, and what you've seen, because you you've dealt with a lot of men and 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 counseling and coaching, spiritual perspective. What do you see is this uh, the state of manhood today? 
Um, are they in a state of emergency? Are men evolving? Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess initially, man, I I would almost say it's all over. Um, I think it depends on you know what what your context is, what side of the tracks you're living on, you know who your circle of folks are. Um, I've I've really begun over the last two months started to dive a lot more into working specifically with men through mentorship and discipleship. And so what I'm finding, man, is that you have everything from those men who are hungry and healthy and pouring into other men. And those men who are being poured into are, are hungry and they are willing to be humble and sit under uh, good, healthy, masculine leadership. Um, you have it from there to those men that are just trying to put one foot in front of the other. Um, they didn't grow up without a father. I mean, they grew up without a father. They, they, they don't have a ton of, you know, good masculinity uh, in terms of community around them. Um, and so they're just trying to figure it out as they go, man. And then obviously you still got the other side of the pendulum on, on all of this where um, you, you just got men out there who are destructive and are making um, the loudest noise when it comes to this conversation on masculinity. And so that super toxic group of men, um, or um, I'll throw this out there as a precursor, boys, shall I say, um, can, can tend to overshadow, right? Um, those men that are doing the best that they can with what they know, with what they have, and those men that are actually thriving. And so I would say the state is, is all over, man. I mean, all right, is it is it is it an epidemic where we we have a shortage of of good healthy men um, who are loud and in the public and expressing their gift? I would say yes, most indeed. Any man out there that is leaning into the heart of the Lord, any man out there that is healthy, that is grinding, that is hustling, is taking care of their families. Um, that is having positive impact in the community, man, we need y'all. We need y'all. We need your voice. We need you on YouTube. We need you in, in, in stores, in the neighborhoods, in churches, in community rooms. Like we need you. Doesn't matter whether or not you're going to have a massive influence or a small influence. We need you. So that way we can begin to get those stories, right? Of those men that are actually holding up, you know, um, holding up the standard of what it means to be a healthy man. So that's my longer to short answer there, man. But I feel like that's where we at. Yeah, for sure, man. Because all it takes is one, right? That's all it takes. Man, heck yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, because you know how we are. We're, we're, we're competitors by nature. And so it's like, if I see one brother on his grind and leaning in and pursuing healthiness, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm naturally going to be challenged in that like yo like let me let me work let me let me put my hand to to my ground and and, and see what it is that I'm supposed to be doing on my end so you're right it only takes one yeah man for sure cuz I think about the impact that I've had on my life from 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 you to so many other people from you know Pastor Colbert uh, uh Pastor yep. Vernon and and just yep. so many my, my brother like so many different men that was able to pour into my life that actually took time to yep. invest in me yep and and, <clears throat> and even you know when I look at uh so many other men that have poured into my life and I was just thinking like I'm I'm spoiled mm -hmm. I'm thinking how many men took time to invest in me Bro. And how many people actually didn't get what I had at the time? Right. I just right. took it for granted. Like all men should get this. No, they don't. They don't, man. Listen, I I actually have uh, two gentlemen that I'm walking with right now who are older than me. All right. They're in their late 40s and they have never had these. Are, these are their words, bro. They have never had a man walk alongside of them through life that they could call on, that they could reach out to. So I'm I'm swimming in the same waters as you, man. Like obviously I had I had my dad. That was by the grace of God. My dad, Timothy Hawkins, he's not my biological dad, but he's a dad that I've only ever known my entire life. And then he was humble 
and wise enough, bro, to allow five other pivotal men, bro, to pour into my life as a teenager, bro. They would always come and get me, bring me to their house, do work, take me out, lunch, all of that, bro. So like they were, I, I same as you, bro. I had I just had community of men around me growing up that helped me develop as a young man. Yes, yes. I even think about even uh Sam when I was going to um uh ACU and I was going to Arizona mm -hmm. Christian University and and he he was my professor and then he's like, Hey man, you want to catch catch up on some coffee? Right. Boom. Right. Man spent two years of his life pouring See? into me, you know, stuff that I still carry with me to this day. So it's it's funny how in time and live time, we don't think how much of an impact that moment can have on us right right yeah totally bro and dare i say man for both of us i had i had a few young men as well not a few young men i had a few gentlemen as well kind of you went to your college years and my young adult years same bro and here's what came up for me when you were saying that we had men in our lives and we still found ourselves in challenging life situations right <laughs> And so, like, it doesn't mean that healthy masculinity as community is it, it makes things fail proof, but it makes me ask the question, bro, just imagine if we didn't have them. <laughs> I don't know about you, bro, but if I didn't have healthy men in my life, bro, God help us all. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And that's uh, me. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. And, and again, I think about. How many men don't have that and how many men are actually thirsty and hungry for that and where we need to connect? I wanted to ask you about that. Where's the disconnect between our generation and and say guys that's in guys that's maybe 20, 25? Like, are we connected or are we not? And if so, what is the disconnect? Yeah, I I think it's. Gosh, man, this thing's so it's it's so nuanced. And so let me just let me just look, you're talking to me, so I'm gonna speak out of my own context, man. Yeah. I I do believe the disconnect from our generation is that the younger generation is hungry for relationship. Mm -hmm. They're hungry for consistent community um that extends beyond something eventful you know and and i think for us we have to learn and i'm and i'm really kind of going um you know our age bro around that that mid 40s and older um we have to learn how to slow down and simplify our lives to create margin for this younger generation mm. you know what i'm saying and i think it's us creating margin for this younger generation that's actually going to help pull them out of out of their silos man i think the second thing is man we we have to call these young men into the battle and not just behavior modification mm. so i think that's what a lot of times we're calling young men into behavior modification hey you a young man or you a man you need to be doing this that and the third don't be out here acting like this that and the third that's like hold up though like they you haven't even built relationship with them you know what I'm saying? Real talk, bro. I was talking to somebody today, young man that mm -hmm. I'm working with, that I'm mentoring. And he he said to me, bro, he said, listen, Hawk, I, I love you and I respect you because I understand where you're coming from and the time that we've gotten to spend with each other. And he said, bro, whatever you tell me to do, man, I'll do it because I know it's coming from a good place in your heart and we've journeyed together in life, Right. And so I think I think what we're failing to realize is that the young men of our culture, bro, will legitimately do exactly what we advise them to do if they know, feel and believe that we're trustworthy. Right. That if I know, bro, you got my best interest at heart and, and when rubber meets the road and we're about to dive off in a battle, bro, you telling me to run into the war? swords blazing bro guns blazing let's do it yeah. let's do it why because i'm i'm out here battling with the guy who's pouring into my life and you are battle tested and i've been privy to that and so mm -hmm. i said bro it's older generation 
we need to we need to pull them in, man, by way of relationship, um, build that trust. And if we do that, man, I think that gap will start to close um, and we'll start to see healthy communities and men come up. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, um, and I, I'm trying to think of the word that you use. I don't know if you said that we were too busy or you said we as far as our generation, did you say something like we were too busy or like we're not? connected with them like uh maybe like we need to slow down or something yeah yeah slow down simplify our lives bro create margin create margin man for for just the space to linger you know what i mean everything for, about us today is hustle hustle go 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 right and, and like our 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 grind is our badge of honor when when at these days for me bro like i want i want the time that i get to spend with the brothers to be a badge of honor that that we sat together, we ate together, you know, our kids played together, our wives hung out together. Um, you know, my wife and I spent, you know, we we were able to spend time with this young couple coming up, right? Like we want we want those spaces to be the badge of honor, man. Um, where I'm not selling you something, or I'm not just trying to get you to to promote what I'm doing, but I'm genuinely interested. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And what you're doing, where you're trying to go and who the Lord is calling you to become. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man, we got to create margin for that, though. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, man, because we just busy, busy, busy. We just, you know, running on fumes, man. You know, listen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, let me throw this one thing out there, too. Sure. It, I know some of us, we all have different. We have different people capacities, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that for us as men, you got to have like 10, 11, 12 young men under your wing or what. Not at all. But I do believe we should have at least one young man per year, bro. Mm. I would tell any man out there, just, just commit mm -hmm. the next 12 months to finding that one young man and pour into him. Just meet with him twice a month for coffee. Mm -hmm. like And just like, bro, that's what, it's 12 so what, 12 times two is mm -hmm. 24, like 24 meetings in a year, bro, of just one-on-one. -on -one? There's, a, there's a lot that can happen in that space. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and we had, yeah, we, and now that I'm older, I, and I know this, but living it now, it's like to give myself away, Right. That everything isn't just centered around me. This, you know, it's just my world and stuff like that to to pour myself out and to be able to give and know that this is bigger than me. Um, because I'm already I have three little boys. Oh you know. Come on. So, you know, Come on. Don't get me started on that. Like <laughs> anyway, that let me pause because I know you got we got most stuff to talk to, but go ahead, man. No, no, hey, no, I hey. If we creating some magic, let's make it happen. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. well, okay. Look, since you're giving the invitation, man. Yeah, for sure. I think I think for a lot of us fathers, like especially if you have sons, there's there's automatically built in a community of young brothers. Okay, I have in our house right now, um, just on between my wife and I, just just two of our boys that we have. Okay, because we're a blended family. Two of our boys have generated one, two, three, four more young men that have lived with us, okay? And the common denominator amongst all four of these young men is either no relationship or a deeply strained relationship with their father. Mm -hmm. Just through my two sons. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, like, to your point, man, I think... The huge piece is that as we pour into those that immediately live in our household, they're going to begin to embody what's being poured into them. You know, both of our boys came up to us, was like, yo, I got a friend. They fell on hard times at their house. You know, their, their, their mom kicked them out, yada, yada, yada. At our, at our crib here, bro, we don't ask any questions. We say, look, we don't want you homeless. We got a bed for you. Come on through, you know. Now, when they come through. It ain't just come through and do what you want to do. Right, right. Because we we build in, especially we talking about young boys, we build in men here. You know what I'm saying? So like there's there's things that they gotta line up with. There's things, but but I just believe, man, because of the mission and the brotherhood and and 
the battleground that 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 we're casting as a vision over here it's contagious mm -hmm. you know and so when you're a young man and you come into a home and there's three other young men and those young men are out working and in school and handling their business and you're the oddball now yep you know what i'm saying you're the oddball now and you've been blessed to be a part of a family that's not yours it's like yo let me let me tighten up because this is something different over here you know what i mean and so that's that's just man just to your point about 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 your boys man like i think every father out there that's a built-in opportunity yeah and all and, of our boys got friends yeah man and, I, and you know i have a blended family and um two boys with autism you know what I'm saying? So we Come have on. different challenges, but at the same time, yeah, they still yeah. have influence. They still have impact. Um, yep. And, and, oh, yeah, let me say this real quick. Cause yep. I know that we're talking about men, but when we talked about friends and, and being the eyeball out, right. My wife was telling me how important it is to have friends who, who can impact Mm. friends she was like if my friend never inspired me to go to college she's like I never would be, I never would have been a nurse Come she's on. like but because that's my home girl she's like nah Clarissa we nah we're about to go to college because that's what I'm doing we home girls you know so she's like I'm forever grateful for that she's like I want to make sure yeah. our boys yeah you know what I'm saying yeah yeah Mm -hmm. quick sidebar bro mm -hmm. we gotta get together i didn't know you had boys that were autistic we got a daughter that's autistic bro so just we need to link up that's look put that in your podcast piece bro i think i think there's a lot of conversation we could have around that man just learning that journey so and i'm just brother to brother i'm interested in picking your brain on that so anyway Oh right. my God. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. We just kicking it at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is, this is, this is what, what, you know, friendship do. Right. But this yeah, is great content. Yeah. And, and to what you're saying, I'm actually working on a series mm. for parents who have kids with autism from a marriage perspective and from a single parent perspective. Yes. Yes. So I have a four part series coming up with that. And, That's so huge. Yeah, and my wife, she, you know, she works with special needs kids. Like she's she's been doing this okay. for the past two, 10 years. Okay. So okay. yeah, there's so anyway, once we yeah, once we get off, we'll have conversation. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me turn back to our topic. Okay. Uh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you said your mom gave two acronyms. And I need you to break this down for me. I seen this in a post that you had and I'm swiping and I was just like, I got to see it because it was like a carousel. And they were boy, burden on you, B-O-Y, and man, meet a need. Can you yep. talk about those, please? Yeah, yeah. My mom, God bless her. I call her sister Rachel Hawkins, man. Shout out to Rachel Hawkins. She used to always give me things like this, bro, growing up. And I'm like, man, I like mom, I'm 12. Like, what does that even matter to me? So if you're a mom out there and you got a nugget, just drop it on your son. You never know when they're going to need it or use it. But I remember it was in the living room and she and she just said, I think she was probably talking me through something, man, because man, I gave my parents a hard time, bro. Real talk. I was not <laughs> the best kid ever. So let's just leave that there. Um but it was just such a pivotal moment in, in a lecture that she was giving me. Dare I say lecture, not a conversation. And she <laughs> said, son, you being a burden right now. She said, because you acting like a boy. She said, that's what boy means. B-O-Y, burden on you. And what we come to learn in that, bro, is that by and large, boys are burdens. Okay. And, and just a little bit of sociology here. When you're thinking about a boy we do want you to consider biologically speaking zero to, to, to 18, right? As a minor, zero to 18. And there's two critical seasons of life that's happening here. About zero to 12, it's dependency, that's childhood, right? And then 13, 
Um, and obviously beyond 18, but we're just going to cap it at 18 for conversation's sake. 13 to 18 is that adolescent phase, which is independency. Both of these seasons are necessary, right, for for full mature uh, adulthood to happen. But also both of these seasons are completely selfish because in, in the phase of dependency, as, as a boy zero to 12, I'm saying it's about me. I need you, Right. But then in the phase of independency, it's equally selfish. It's about me. I don't need you. Right. And so this is this is where 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 that term came from, uh, from my mom and just helping me understand this is the phase of life that I'm in. But I'm only going to be a boy for so long. Right. At some point, I got to grow up and become a man. And this is the shift to where we move into man, M-A-N, meet a need, right? And so when you put dependency and independency together, you get the healthy expression of interdependency, okay? This is where it's no longer just about me, I need you. Mm -hmm. Neither is it no longer just about me, I don't need you. Which, by the way, quick pin here, a lot of our men find themselves in this independent phase of adolescence, where they don't care about anybody else but themselves, okay? It's 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 legitimately, bro, that delayed phase of where you just focusing on you, whatever you want, whatever makes you feel good, whatever makes you happy, and you don't even really care who it hurts, who it offends, who it undermines, who it puts at odds. If it just makes you feel good, then that's what you're choosing. And, and what my parents are trying to get me to see is that when I pair dependency and independency together, it becomes interdependency where it is, it's about us. I need you, but I'm equally bringing something to the table, right? And that's where we get into that space of helping men learn to meet the needs of the people that surround them. So baseline, bro, that's boy. And that's man. And legitimately, it's 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 framed my life, man, my entire life since my mom has shared that with me. Wow. Yeah, I love that because some people are in full relationships, adults, still a B.O.Y. Bro. Bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 If if you have a boy in a relationship and and there's two ways that they could still be acting as a boy. Right independent they're 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 in that phase of dependency and so we know dependency today to be people adults who are codependent right mm -hmm. but then you might also have a, a a husband right or a boyfriend who is in that phase of independency and we know people today who are stuck in that phase of independency if it's toxic they 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 are narcissistic right so like adults who are stuck in those you know, minor uh, phases of life, um, that's when you're moving into toxicity, man, and something that's unhealthy. And, and that's where we need to be challenged to grow as men. And that's where I love the saying that I, 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 I love the saying that says men become men in the community of men. And so what we were talking about earlier, this is why men need other men around them, bro, because I'm going to speak to you, bro, in a way that a woman ain't going to speak to you. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Shout out to our wives. Like, we need them. We love them. Shout out to all the moms. We need that love. We need that. But nothing flips a switch in a man like another man, bro. Nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's real. Yeah, for sure. Because even, even at my church, there was um, one of the guys that he worked there. And uh, shout out if you're listening or watching. <laughs> but he was like, I just need a group of men, about six or seven people that I want to put together and I want us to like do life together. I want us to get to know each other over this next year, yeah. you know? And so he's like, hey, man, let, let's do life together. Like he, and he, he been, you know, checking me out for a while. We be talking and stuff like that. We're cool. But when he asked me, I was like, oh, I was like, okay. Cause I, like, I didn't ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But he saw something in me and 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 check this out. <clears throat> He's only like 25. Hungry. <laughs> yeah, right? Hungry. So, 
So here it is again in this community of men, you know, us doing life together. It's like it's refreshing because I missed out on that for a season. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Can't be, can't be, cannot be underestimated. You know, I do hear, I hear single moms asking the question, you know, how do I, how do Let's I get my it. son right in, in this community of men? Like, where do I, where do I find this at? You know? Um, and I think there's, there's a lot of different ways. Yeah, obviously you've got sports, you know, I think, I think getting, getting our boys into to sports programs where they're around other males, they're around, you know, ideally a group of men as their coaches, um, man, there's a lot of just good, healthy masculinity. And obviously there's the opposite as well, but good, healthy masculinity built into those spaces. So I would say sports, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, but then obviously too, man, like, Church is still, man. Church is still the number one space, bro, for young males to grow up with just healthy community, you know? Um, and so I would say, man, single moms, beg them, beg, beg a group of men, nag them because our son's lives depends on it. Depends on it. No young boy who has grown up in a context of healthy men um, has ever been worse off, man. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know? So I got, I got glitter going off behind me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, well, you know, no young man, but right. Like get them, get them in community, get them in community with other men. They will be better for it. Yes. Totally agree because, like I said before, I would not be where I am today without those men. And 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 it's just like the church is this breeding ground, man. Where once you get them involved, you yep. Know, and, yep. And and once once they once they get excited about going to church, it's a wrap. Yep, it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, totally. You totally. got it. Yeah, I, there, there's okay. So we're gonna kind of switch over into culture a little bit because I want to. Let's rock it. Yeah, because to those who are watching and listening, I know people want to hear your opinion on this stuff. Mm. So the whole thing with uh, Tyrese, right? The whole thing now, word is, is like he's almost too vulnerable. Or, you know, he's every time he gets on an interview, he's crying or he's he's doing too much. He's always crying. Like this is like the narrative that's playing. And we recently did a, a video on the Breakfast Club, and you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's crying. But yeah. I think it was for a legitimate reason, and that's not to disregard his feelings from anything else. Now, just to get us some context, he was talking about when you go through a divorce, and I felt this because I even shared it myself. He was like, "When you go through a divorce, don't just check on the woman; check on the man, bro." Because we people too, right? Sheesh, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, man. Like out the so, gate, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I get I guess I guess the question is like, how much is 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 that is that too much vulnerability? Or like for a man, because you got the, the sisters like he didn't do too much. So help us gauge like what's healthy and what might be quote unquote doing too much or are yeah. you doing too much let me stay in the pocket man i got a lot of thoughts running through my head on this question um please give them all because we need them <laughs> <laughs> um all right so initially initially i i would say this this is what i would say mm -hmm. i would ask a couple questions is is my emotional expression harming somebody mm -hmm. okay so is my emotional expression harming you is my emotional expression disrespecting you is my emotional expression degrading you mm -hmm. okay if my emotional expression what's genuinely coming out of me okay if it's not tearing you down all right i i think that's a box we can check off number one my emotional expression is 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 okay all right secondly though the context of the conversation, 
am I communicating in a space that is safe where it's been it's been stated right that that the space is safe mm -hmm. that I am free and we know bro these days most times on these podcasts um they want authenticity they want the genuine real you right like we don't we don't want the showmanship you we don't want the like especially if we're asking you questions around real life stuff bro uh, for a lot of people in our world podcast is their coaching it's their therapy it's their counseling bro for a lot of people pod these podcasts it's their church it's their religious gathering and community bro so like a lot of people are um good bad or indifferent staking their 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 emotional and mental healthiness on what they're taking in you know what i mean and so I would say in those two regards, man, if I'm not tearing anybody down and the space has been communicated to be safe, man, let me cry. Let me cry. You know what I'm saying? Let yeah, me, sure. let me, let me shed my tears. And then all the more, bro, especially, especially on what he said that don't forget about men in the divorce as well. Um, and, and I would say that across the board, man, because I think a lot of us as men, we historically speaking, we've been taught not to cry, not to shed tears. We've not been given the freedom to to share and express our emotions in ways that are healthy. And so what we end up getting is you get you get boys emotionally who's in their 20s, 30s and 40s. And because we haven't built up the muscle of healthy emotional expression, you either get one of two expressions from us, which both are grossly unhealthy. Either I recluse to my, you know, to whatever it is, my addiction or my man cave, and I shut out relationships, or I'm tearing the whole house up, you know, because I'm angry and I got a temper. And it's like, so, so. If I'm not doing any of those and all I'm doing is sharing out of my heart and I'm and I'm tearful about it, bro, I think we win it mm -hmm. as men, bro. I think we win it. Now, here's one of the other thoughts that was flying through my mind, bro, as you was asking this question. Mm -hmm. I think especially if it's if it's if it's a lot of women who are complaining mm -hmm. about his emotionalism. Is because culturally there's been a flip. There's been a flip where a lot of our women today, bro, um, initially not their fault. So let me say it like this. Let me be clear. Initially not their fault. But due to the fatherless epidemic, due to husbands not staying the course and lovingly protecting, providing for their wives and, and the mothers of their children, Women have had to be, women have been forced to be in a position that I fundamentally believe they were never built for. It is not in their best interest to carry the entire weight of the family. And so they've had to build a muscle of masculine strength that when they finally see a man who has a, a healthy emotional expression, they don't know how to receive it. They don't know how to interpret it. You know what I mean? And so I think that might be another reason why. I mean, just in my own personal opinion, mm -hmm. okay? I do believe that a lot of our women have flipped to the other side of being hard and, and adopting some of those masculine tendencies. It's their responsibility now, but to no fault initially of their own right. because they were kind of thrown into this due to the lack of masculine presence. I agree for sure. That's so good because <clears throat> there was a lady that I had on my show a couple of weeks ago. She'd been, been on the show a couple of times and I was watching yeah. one of her reels and she, <laughs> she said, you know who you are. She said the reason why, the reason why men should be able to cry is because somebody took the time to ask them the right question. Ooh. Ooh. yeah right she was like y'all not asking the right questions yeah she yeah. was like if you ask a man the right question she said all that stuff that's pent up in him oh it's this it's a wrap 
Yeah. You know, yeah. now for me, I'm older, so I'm a little more sensitive now. Like I'll be crying about stuff because I'm like, you know, I have fewer years ahead of me now that I'm older. <laughs> I be crying about all kind of stuff, right? <laughs> so, oh. You know, when when I, when I was twenty and I'm watching football and and somebody got hit, I'm, I'm oh, I'm like, oh, he took his head off. Now yeah, I see yeah. somebody get hit and he's he's hurting. I'm just like, he got a family. What about yeah. his kids? You know what right. I'm saying? So right. I'm thinking right. on a right. different level now. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, but, yeah, man. I mean, to that point. I think for me, man, my family knows that, that that I've always been a tearful individual, man. Legitimately, I I don't know why, man. I can't. I don't know where to point it to. Like, I didn't see my my dad cry a lot. So let me start there. I didn't see my dad cry a lot, but I did grow up seeing a lot of emotion from my dad. Mm -hmm. Like, I had, I had, I had, and still to this day, bro, I have an emotional relationship with my dad. I'm using emotional in a healthy way. Like mm -hmm. to this day. Um, if, if we, when we go see them and it's nighttime or they come out here and see us and it's nighttime and we're about to go to sleep to this day, mid forties, bro, I'm giving my dad a hug and kiss. Good night. Like that's, that was just, we were very touchy feely growing up. We wrestled a lot. We punched each other a lot. We grabbed each other a lot. We pushed each other a lot. We yeah. hug a lot. You know what I mean? And so I just think for me, man, growing up, I was always, always a tearful individual, man. I mean, I, I cry on stuff you shouldn't be crying on. So I'm just, uh, we're just going to leave that there, man. Cause we ain't talking about us crying, but yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Point, Cause you know, somebody in the comment section going to ask, what, what were you crying about? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to leave that one alone. Uh... <laughs> so a great answer, by the way, that man, we can go so many places with that. Sticking from a cultural perspective. Now this whole thing with Cam Newton and Nick Cannon, right? The video just came out a couple of days ago. Uh, Dr. Bryant is on there and she's basically kind of like giving them the business. But the whole perspective is you're creating these broken homes, even though you can't quote unquote provide. Yeah. You're still creating these broken homes. I have something I want to say about that, um, but I'm going to let you say what you have to say first, because I don't know if I'm going to get canceled for saying this, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i i i did see i did see that interview that 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 episode man um and i most times when i see these types of interviews i i, I tend to have a lot more questions than maybe what the episode would lend okay so let me say that like i would have a lot more questions for cam newton um in this one particular episode that you're referencing um, just to get some more context in terms of what he means um, on some things that he had said, right? I would want that. But since we don't have all of that, um, I think what Dr. Bryan said was, on, on one hand, it, it's true. If if a kid does not have a father in a home um, that they can see daily, that they if they don't have a man present that they they can emulate, you know, that they can follow after. Um, we have, as men, we have created some sense of brokenness. We've created a gap. You know what I mean? Um, and that's not about being horrible people. Right. That's not a, an attack on character. That's not an attack on our identity. Um, it's the nature of brokenness. You know what I'm saying? It's the nature of brokenness. And, and 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 in these types of conversations, I'm always first wanting to assume primary responsibility, you know? So as a man, what can I do, right? To be a better provider, to be a, a better protector um, of kids, of my kids. I mean, cause you know, uh, one of my kids, man, my, my kids are, are my daughter. She's, she's 50, 50 between her mom and I. Mm -hmm. So like, I, while while most times I get to see her every day because of, you know, going to school and we ride to school together. I take her to school, pick her up. She's at my house, things like that. Um, but those days that I don't, that she's not under my roof, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There, there, there's a, there's a gap there. There's a gap there. You know what I'm saying? And so I think initially as men, we've got to own that um, and find ways to be creatively healthy 
in our engagement of our kids and especially those kids that aren't under our roof um, every single day. So that's that's my that's my broad strokes answer without having the freedom to an- uh, ask questions that I do have um, <laughs> of Cam Newton on a deeper level. So, you know, but yeah. So so say Cam is watching this video. What okay. would be the question that you ask Cam? <laughs> yeah. So specifically then I would, I would ask him, there was one particular line that he, uh, that he said where Dr. Brian kind of went in on him for where he said he wanted more kids, but he didn't necessarily attach his desire for more kids to being able to love a woman and out of loving a woman, their love together producing more, whether that be by birth, biologically, or adoption, right? Um, he did he didn't communicate that. You know, and 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 so that's the question I would I would ask him. Are you saying that you you just want to have more kids detached from, you know, their mom, a mom who can co-labor with you in loving those kids together? Is that what you're saying? You know, um, or maybe in that moment, he just didn't really fully communicate that, communicate that. Well, I would give him the benefit of that, but that's one question I would ask him, man. And based on how he answers that, um, you know, subsequent questions would would, would follow, man, because I think kids are always better when there is both masculine and feminine love in the building, bro. They're, they're always better. Um, to that point, man, um, you know, my daughter has, uh, my biological daughter has a stepdad and, mm-hmm. and we, we, we are cool, bro. Like we're championing each other, man. I, I've sent him text messages about bro. Like, listen, I'm grateful. I appreciate you, man. And likewise, you know what I'm saying? Vice versa. And I feel like, bro, like that's next level step for us as men. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids, especially if kids that are byproducts of divorce and they're in between two homes, they didn't ask for this. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't put themselves in this situation. So I think it's on us as men to say, yo, how do we become interdependent Mm -hmm. and and, and fall into that bucket of M-A-N, meet a need? This ain't about us right now. This is about these kids having healthy home interactions, particularly with men who love them and see them and provide for them and want the best for them, bro. And, and if that means we got to come together with our ex's now new husband, bro, <laughs> for the sake of future generations, I'm going to wave that banner, bro, 100%. Yeah. I'm going to wave that banner, man, because we got to grow up. We got to grow up, man. Yes. I think I think only boys will complain and, and find ways to not step up to the plate just because the situation probably didn't go the way that they think it should have gone. Mm, you, you're yeah. being a boy. You're being indep- you're you're being independent, or you are being dependent, and you need to grow up and become mm-hmm. interdependent and realize that life is not about us, but it's about the people that we get to raise up and make better. Yeah, so. I totally agree. And because blended families is a whole different episode, right? I mean, I don't think we talk about that enough. No, no. We don't, we don't, man. And 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 blended families are 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 they're going through, they're they're learning their way through it, man. They're they're finding their way through it. Um, and some situations are great and amazing, and other situations not so much. So yeah. definitely, man. Listen, I'd even be willing to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. So <laughs> yeah. Let me know because I'm still learning. <laughs> hey, me too. This is this is my second time around, and you know, married and hey. <laughs> blended family. Yeah. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. Um. So there was, and somebody in the comment section, correct me if I'm wrong. So when you see this video, don't come for me. So I'm asking you to drop the the correct verbiage for this uh, next comment. But if if I'm right, Dr. Brian said on the video I, that caught my attention. She said that. Uh, a blended family is still a broken home. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on that? And again, if I'm wrong, someone correct me in the comments. Yeah, so don't, yeah, don't put this on yeah. shade room talking about <laughs> you know, just to <laughs> clarify. So go ahead. Yeah, I mean, okay, at its a blended family at its core, um, I, I can let me start on this side. I can understand how she would say that. 
-hmm. right? Because the blended family is not the ideal, right? right? That's not the ideal. Right. However, and a massive however, <laughs> okay? Um, while it might be broken, quote unquote broken, I am. I will wave the banner to say that the blended family most indeed can be redeemed, mm. right? Mm. It, it can be something because again, we, we don't know what people came out of. You see what I'm saying? The ideal many times is, is more toxic than the blended context. Yeah. You know, and when I'm talking about the ideal, right? Two people who come together and they biologically have kids between the two of them, like, you know, many times, man, for this, and the, I'll keep it on the kids' context for the moment, but many times those kids was in a worse situation with both mom and dad in the home together. And now that they're in a blended context, they get to see a redeemed, beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Of what true love, of what true communion, what true, true intimacy in, in a family context looks like, man. I mean, bro, like a lot a good portion, about a third, a third of our kids, um, my wife and I, bro, um, particularly the kids that we say kids by hood, um, they're coming out of challenging situations, like low key abusive situations, yeah. man. So yeah, at its core, one could say, you know, maybe not its core at, at, at the onset of the blended context that I'm in right now. Yeah. One could say it's broken because it wasn't the original. It wasn't the ideal. Mm -hmm. But man, bro, by God's grace. Yeah. But these kids are getting to see a different picture yeah. of what family uh, looks like, what community, what wholeness, what accountability, what encouragement, what 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 unending love looks like, man. Because, again, a lot of these kids, bro, they. They came out of homes where they were kicked out, where one thing, this, that, and the third. And, you know, the parent was like, I ain't dealing with this no more. But now they get to be a part of a context where it's like, yo, you out of pocket. But but your out of pocket context is not worth us being like putting you back on the road. Mm -hmm. We're going to walk with you. You know what I'm saying? We're going to suffer long with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to do what what we can within our power mm -hmm. to get you from where you are to where you need to be, man. And so all of that for me out of, yeah, it might be broken, mm -hmm. but bro, I think there's a lot of blended families out there that's killing it. I agree. Especially the ones that I know. Yeah. So. For sure. Because, you know, they, they say if you feed them long enough, they start to look like you, you know, so. Come on, man. Hey. <laughs> Come on, man. Real talk. They look like you. They yeah. talk like you. They mannerisms. Like, but again, that's that's all caught just by proximity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? By proximity, man. A lot of parenting is really about proximity. I could say all this, that, and the third till I'm blue in the face. I remember more of what my dad showed me than what he said to me. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? True. Yeah, man. So man. That's good. And I think I'm, I guess I'm going to say it. I'm going to end the show with this. I'm trying to think if I should say it. I'm going to say do it. it. Do say it. it. Do it. Do okay. it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to mess the show up with this. But okay. So there's been so much that's been, because this whole situation, you know, when, when celebrities and people start talking about, what celebrities doing and what culture and all these things look like. And so this whole Cam Newton thing and, and Nick Cannon, all this stuff is going on. And people are like so upset, so frustrated, so irritated. And all these tweets and social media posts about, I can't believe these guys. But I'm going to say it. That ain't nothing new. Pookie and Ray Ray broke. And Pookie and Ray Ray been doing it forever. So why is everybody frustrated when Pookie and Ray Ray got three or four kids? Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. And they struggling. And they struggling. <laughs> Can barely, barely send a few dollars, man, to just put some food on the table for them babies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I ain't saying it's right. All I'm saying is it just seems like people are like in such an uproar. And I'm like, come on, man. Pookie been yeah. doing this for the past 30 years. 
they've been they've been making this happen. So, uh, Man, listen, I know you closing on this. Let me add to that, bro. Oh, go ahead. I think there's there's an there's an opportunity for um and I want to say this specifically to the ladies who will hear this. I think with with the likes of Cam Newton, Nick Cannon, and those other men, there's a lot of men out there that have a lot of kids, but are doing their utmost best proximity-wise, presence, financially, to make sure those kids are well taken care of. And so to the ladies out there, if you want men to do better and be better, we do better and we become better, especially when it comes to the women in our lives, through being championed about the good that we're already doing. Even if it's a smidget, right? Like to your point, bro, I, I still celebrate. I still celebrate Cam. I celebrate the Nick Cannons of the world because I've never heard from them a shunning of the responsibility and the desire. You know what I'm saying? I've never heard that from them. Mm -hmm. Shunning of the responsibility and desire to cover, to love and take care of their kids. Never heard it from them. And all of their podcasts and episodes and shows that they've done and moments that they've talked about their kids. I've never heard them say that before. Yeah. I've never heard them talk like it's a bear or mm -hmm. it's a dread or never. They they gladly, they gladly, bro, love and care for them kids. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, I think I think we I think we should celebrate what we see that is good. Um, and, and pray for the stuff that we don't see, um, that the truth of the matter is we really don't know because we're not in life with them. That's so true. that's <laughs> very true. That's so good. I'm glad you said that because, and a lot of times from what I hear from relationships, even like when I'm coaching, when I'm talking to relationships, when I'm talking to people and marriages and all this other stuff, I realize that if, like you said, celebrate he, if he took out the trash that's all he did because i get it a lot of times the woman is left with when it comes to the kids yep yep they they yep. they hold it down right yep but if you can give that man some kind of positive affirmation yeah okay he took out the trash okay you put some air on my tire all right i ain't saying you got to buy him a cake but acknowledge that because yeah. the more that yep. you beat him up it's it's crazy how like the old school old school folks say you get more more bees with honey right yes yes it's amazing how people and ladies am I coming for you I'm just saying since we're in this context yeah 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 you can't expect him to be this great man but at the same time tell him how terrible he is yeah like. Yeah. It's the same thing almost like with your kids, right? You can't keep just beating down your kids and telling them right. everything that they're not right. doing right. and then expect them to, to flourish. It yep. doesn't work like that. You know, you want to be complimented. You want to, you know, your, your man to say you look good and stuff like that. So yep. and it's like if you continually beat him up, you can't expect him to just the, the like the, the switch is going to come on one day. Oh, you know what? I'm going to don't work like that. No, nope. no, nope. nope. especially if he's a good man. If, if he's an honest man with integrity, he's already putting pressure on himself. Like, I feel like there's just an initial, like, I feel like we have an automatic pressure point, bro, that's just built into us at men. We're already walking around with a load. We might not dot our I's and cross all of our T's well. And I think at that level, it's just skill set, mm -hmm. um, access. But, bro, like, so, so to have the negativity is just more pressure being added to the pressure that I'm already putting on myself. Um, and so it's like, like you're saying, lift that load for me. Just be like, yo, I appreciate you taking out the trash. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you opening up my door. I appreciate you taking care of my car. I appreciate you grabbing lunch. I pre just, man, the I appreciate you, bro. Then that that energy meter start kicking in, right? Hey, the imagination happened. get to go and be like, yo, what else can I do? Let me, let me lean in even more, you know? Man, listen, yeah. that's real. Because even in my own marriage, there was a time my wife and I was just just always at odds. It just seemed like there's something always going on. You know, we just got yeah. so much stuff going on. We yeah. have all these differences and frustration and arguments and all these different things. And we in therapy and just all this. And I remember one day 
I was like, you know what? I need to be more proactive. And I even put it in one of my Instagram posts. The, the thing went crazy. I think it had like 4 million views. It was like a reaction oh, video wow. I did. Wow. But in the comments, I was apologizing to my wife publicly. Like, yeah, I struggled with help carrying my load when it came to doing household responsibilities and the kids and just trying to, I'm, I was trying to find where I fit in and where I can step in where I needed to. Cause my wife was like superwoman. One day she's just like, I'm tired. And I was just like, so where do, where am I fitting in with this? Right. You know what I'm saying? And yep. that day I, and I remember I was like, you know what, let me just, how you, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? It's like, you know what, it. let me, let me go make sure a gas tank is full. Right. Right. Let me, let me make sure I change these little kids diapers. Let me make sure I help brush their teeth that night, all these different things. Yeah. Yeah. And slowly but surely, you know, and my wife be like, Hey babe, how was your day? And all this other stuff and, and help lightening that load and which I should have been carrying anyway. I just tried to find my way. Right. Yeah, right. Once I found my way, then, like you said, it's that interdependence. We've learned to work together as a team, opposed to struggle mm -hmm. Olympics. Like I was doing this, well, I was doing this. I'm more tired. I'm tired than you. Than I did, you know that whole thing. So, uh, yeah, man, that's good. That's good. We'll be here another hour, by the way. I know, gonna, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, do that, man. Yeah. 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 Man. Well, man. Dwayne, this has been a phenomenal episode, man. Once again, we get on here and it's just like we sitting on the couch, just, just bro, like, man. We have to fight against the tangents, man. The the <laughs> rabbit trails and be like, but no, man. It's yeah. it's. I'm grateful too, bro. I'm grateful, man, that you always think about a brother, man. Hit me up, man. Especially on these kind of conversations, man. It's just good. It's also it's also iron sharpening iron, man, for me just to be able to rethink through these things and talk through these things with somebody else that's like-minded so bro i'm super grateful for you bro real talk man and one last thing i know you're trying to get out of here hey, but no. i'm inspired by bro by and i want to say this publicly so don't edit this out okay <laughs> um, um no i want to say publicly bro that i am inspired man by your consistency Real talk, bro. Um, for what it's worth, man, stay the course, man. You are impacting a lot of people, bro. Um, and so I know you have your moments where you like, should I continue? Should I not? Do I feel like it today? I could miss one week, man. But you blessing a lot of folks out here, man. Real talk, bro. And just know that your consistency, man, is an inspiration to me, bro. So I appreciate you, man. Wow. Hey, man, I received that. Thanks, man. That that means a lot. Uh, yeah, we got we got history, man. So that coming from you means a lot to me. So, man, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, we can go on and on. <laughs> I think thank you, man. I'm, I'm honored, man. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you, because the 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 gems that you dropped tonight, man, people have to connect with you. So, yeah, uh, Instagram. Look, my Instagram page. You can type Dwayne and Wendy, um, or I think it's uh, it's like TDH Tribe uh underscore it's one of the things man my wife be doing all this. she knows that i'll have it linked in the description i'm gonna have it linked yeah, yeah hit me up on instagram and uh you can even still go to our website to reach out to us tdhcoaching.com um or the new thing hint hint i'll drop this out there true tribes.org um tribes is plural so i'll be talking about that man and some upcoming content i've been revamping some stuff um you know trying to reboot here in a little bit so um, stay tuned. We're going to be diving more into some heavy stuff on my Instagram. And then I'm even I'm trying to follow in the footsteps of Sean. You know, you know, you told me this decades ago, bro. Let's just be clear about that. You put this on me decades ago. So we finally going to pull the trigger on some stuff over here based on advice that you've given me man, years ago. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, look at God. Man, yeah. well, you heard it here at Brave Hearts Community. All the gems that Dwayne dropped tonight, you, you got to go connect. So make sure I have everything linked up in the description. Make sure you connect with them because I only bring the best on today's podcast, on this podcast. So if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, share this with a friend, put it in your group chat, especially for the guys. I know you got you on your, your three or four homies. Y'all got y'all little group chat. Drop this video in there and then y'all watch it and have a discussion. And then, you know, hit hit us up. Hit up Dwayne. Send him an email. 
And if you are li listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. By doing so, I'll put you in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? This is Sean Heineman with special guest Dwayne Hawkins. And we are.